I think let's get the show on the road with some annam, the papula podi, and some nai. Mm. Oh, that aroma of that biryani. You want to have an actual original biryani taste. You should not add the hard raita as well as the gravy. Then only will get the biryani taste. Mm. Mutton biryani, rice do suganda bere. Huh? There's a certain aroma that you will taste in that mutton biryani rice. Mm. The texture of this kima ball is absolutely incredible. Hi folks, this is Kripal Amana Gourmet on the Road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe and strong. Out here in Namma Bengaluru, we love our Andhra food. And over the last couple of years, I think we've covered most of the iconic Andhra eateries that exist in the city. We've covered Bhimas, Nandana Palace, Nagarjuna, we've covered Meghnas, we've also covered some of the smaller eateries like Pollamma's Mess, Vijay Kitchen etc. But there's one very popular Andhra restaurant that we haven't gotten to yet and that is Mayuri at Minerva Circle, JC Road. This is a restaurant that's been around for the last 34-35 years. And today we are on our way here to savour some Andhra Bhojanam and also their very crowd-pleasing biryani and a few other dishes. So stick around till the end of this episode especially if you like your Andhra flavours. Oh, Namaskara sir. Please come. He is my son, Mahit. Mahit, nice to meet you. Namaskara. So you, Shuru Maadi Dari Yudho? How sir? How sir? 35 years ago. 10th of August 1986. 10th of August 1986. This August comes. Both are complete. 36 years. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. 40 years back, we migrated from Andhra. Okay. Karnataka border. So, border is my house is not even for long. If you throw the stone, <laughs> and what is the name of the place? Rajupalli. 26th of January 1982. I joined in a hotel. Alright. I'm going to go to the house. I found Mr. J. Ramari, the great man who is no more today. Okay. I'm going to go to the house. Our own Amavishna, the day go in the day, Sandy will give us the hotel market and I'll lend the Sandy hotel market. Oh, Agan Galakin and then invest Matilla. Our invest Madagan and partner like Madagan. Oh, I like the Mukiva with more towers and the very customers there. Other than the thirty six years and the regular about it. Regular Andras Telil Bangistan, Nara and Rajan, the Bala famous Argon. How next to the Chili Nara Rajan, Chili Nara, you know, I won't care about Nashuru Madi. Awal mandi, semua edi malas kena, nanti western malik beral lah ntar. Then all western is my recipe. From a childhood days, cooking is my hobby. Cooking is your hobby. Yeah. Even I was studying in, I think eighth class, ninth class. Number lah tu drama happy tu. Awal tu dead dead night, aku open a tea stall in those days. Ah. And how old were you sir when you came to Bengaluru? I was born in 1955 May. Okay. 27 years. 27 years. So this Mayuri has been an institution now for the last yeah, 36 yeah. It years. It has given in a, what you call it, a life and uh, this thing is so many people, bread and butter to my so many people. Nanu open mada sir, Andhra sir, solpa craze kamni aagi, solpa down aagi thay to. Aavag hagadur maadi ena success maadu vay kanta. Nani balas to illa namma kala ho 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 limbak dille. Engineering college, medical college, dental college, and also PUC, LLB, all colleges. Our students request me to have a mini meals here. That's the most success for me because my students have this. I think that's fascinating. So whenever I go to these institutions, places that have been around for a while, I invariably find that a lot of these places perhaps have students as their earliest patrons. Once they get accustomed to the taste, even decades later, they're still fondly reminiscent. I have a customer who is about 55 years ago. He brought his son and as well as his grandson. 
ಅವರಪ್ಪ ಅವನ ಹುಡುಗಿನ ಇರುವ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಂತ ಗುಲ್ಬರ್ಗ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಯಾವಾಗ ಬಂದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಊಟ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ತಿನ್ಸಲೇಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರು ಬಂದು ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬಂದು ನನಗೆ ಪರಿಚಯ ಮಾಡಿ ಹೋದ್ರು ಅವರಪ್ಪ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಂತ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಂಟಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಸೊ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅನ್ ಇಮೋಷನಲ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮರ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಅ ಕಸ್ಟಮರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಯರ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ಹೀಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮೀಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಲಿ ಚಿಕನ್ ಆರ್ ವಟ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಮೋಷನಲ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ like this customer who was first brought by his father to this place yeah, yeah. when he was a young boy today is bringing his son yeah, son and grandchildren and grandchildren to the place as well too. one more gentleman uh, who is from america uh, he works for the boy company uh, uh, nam hl in the connection they avarge uh, whenever he comes to india he used to come to bang mayuri you know they say food connects people to the land and yeah, i'm yeah. sure with this gentleman when he probably has that taste of that biryani and those other dishes it directly tells him that he has arrived in namma bengaluru yeah yeah definitely sir the fantastic yeah, so idella nimdu special as a really illa sahu sir biryani chilli 65 kebab shole kebab french boneless then uh, mutton biryani mutton chops mutton kheema balls mutton kheema fry special yen ande sir ನಾವು ನಾನ್ ವೆಜ್ ಏನು ಹೋಟ್ಲ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ವೆಜಿಟೇರಿಯನ್ ಅಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ನಾನ್ ವೆಜ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಪ್ರಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ವೆಜಿಟೇರಿಯನ್ ಪ್ರಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೋತ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮರ್ಸ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ 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 ನನ್ನ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ Uh, definitely i can say I'm proud of my staff no else in bangalore you get such a good staff customer still barodo food kante mukhyavaga nam uduge kutkonde yav tau band kutti takshana avare gottirutte yarige en beku order kelala tand idbittare so eshtu varsha iddira nivu ellaru 20 years nam halle oldest staff in this hotel namaskara service is 36 36 years so collectively between all the service staff here i think there's at least about 400 years of service yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that's what makes institutions like these what they are of course we may go there savor the food savor the biryani but there is so much that has gone into that place gone into creating whether it's the food or the service or the interactions that they've had with customers over the years that has built that emotional connect and i think that is so precious that is so priceless and that is something that we should do our very best to preserve fantastic sir kitchen note hoda please come sir please come please come So this is where all the meals are getting ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mulangi chutney, sir. Radish chutney. Radish chutney. Yeah. Beans palya. Beans palya. So this is sambar. Sambar. Mangalore Mangal- Mangal- The mango Mangal- cucumber. Mangal- and pappu, sir. Spinach pappu, ha? All mixed, sir. Spinach, dantu soppu, mentia soppu. That's why dal is togri belly, ha? Oh, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Rasam is there? This is the rasam. Jirige, mensu, mentia, ugly kalo, and fry mud, put it in mud. Hosgram. Ah, hosgram. ಪ್ಲೆಂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರೀನ್ ಚಿಲ್ಲಿ and of course it has the chinese influence so yes sir chilli sauce then corn flour corn, corn flour little corn starch to thicken it what is yes. this sir this is our royal chicken royal chicken idralli hmm. eno red chilli powder ah red chilli powder uh. then coriander very nice and sir mutton fry this is mutton chops mutton chops oh this is a papula podi yeah, yeah, yeah. papula podi annam nei yeah, that's yeah. all you want nothing else <laughs> this is powder ha huh. this is puttani ha huh. jeerge garlic dry copra and red chilies red chilies so this you make uh-huh. yeah so i think that is the code for what is available alla this is chicken biryani chicken biryani staff knows this chicken fry chicken chili chicken rice chicken sindoori mutton biryani mutton fry mutton chop chicken 65 lamb chicken fry. ah that is the menu for the day that we are here I can see the biryani. That biryani is deep in slumber. Yeah. Having rested during that process of dam and it's also revealing some of the things that have gone into it. I can see some cardamom. Yeah, cinnamon, uh, cinnamon is cinnamon there. Is there. Cloves are there. And now we're going to gently awaken that biryani. Oh. 
that aroma of that biryani you want to soak up all the aroma of the biryani so this biryani style what is this biryani style called this is andhra style this is andhra style biryani only ghee garlic paste ginger then tomatoes onions cinnamon then yalak cardamom cardamom then lavang lavang that's all you don't put marath mogu no, stone no, flour no. people they put we don't put marath mogu that badana leaf we don't put any bay leaf nothing no, we put. don't we don't put the som Ah, uh, Marathi mak, uh, Abhi Rani Lee, Pudun. So initially, when you put the ghee in, that's when your spices go. First, garlic and ginger paste. Okay. Mm. Then we'll put the tomatoes, onions. Onions. Okay. And then you put the meat. Mutton, bin, any meat, we'll boil pre-boil. So you boil the meat first. You beat what? One chicken, we don't boil. I love the color of the biryani here. I think the color is reddish brown. Yeah, yeah. And a good biryani, you will see that the rice grains are unbroken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, is that, is, that is very important. Yeah, yeah. That is very important. So, how long does this biryani take to cook, sir? Minimum 50 minutes. Sir. 50 minutes. So that is something that we've never talked about much. But every time a biryani is made, we'll bring a little bit to the Agni House. Ah, so little bit to the fire god. Yeah. So I've seen wherever they prepare traditional biryanis, they always offer a bit of that rice. As soon as that biryani comes off them, to the agni, yeah. to the fire yeah. god. That's very uh, gravy, sir. I will tell you one thing. You want to have an actual original biryani taste. You should not add the add raita as well as the gravy. Then only will get the biryani taste. I completely agree with him. You biryani tinwaga, eat the biryani by yeah. itself. Understand? Before the meat piece, also eat the rice bari. Yeah. Ado rice nali, you will find all the yeah, flavor. Definitely. Then you eat the meat, and as far as possible, the sherwa and all is fine. But I agree completely with what Reddy Garu has just said. Garlic ginger paste. I can smell the potency of the ginger yeah. garlic paste. You see this? Yeah. I can. Oh, yeah. I can barely stand here because my eyes are burning. Fifty-fifty eyes, though. Yeah, yeah. Fifty percent garlic, fifty percent ginger. Nilli ke akta illa illi. Sandra, in your biryani, you will have good flavor of the ginger garlic as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a wheat rice, sona masuri. Sona masuri rice. I am the first person uh, who has started sona masuri in, uh, for the rice. Before that, everybody used to that uh, mala gola kalu, that so big. And that is what for the. This is white rice. White for rice. For me, for me. In Andhra. Ah, lemon chicken dry. This is our 65. This is all marinated and kept. Do you add a little yes. color in that, sir? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Little bit. Red chili powder. Ah, uh, sorry, and the powder. Powder, powder. Uh, turmeric. Turmeric. We will put the red chili, so make it dry. Then we'll make it with lychee. So yes. this this is what a combination, garghi, guntur. No, 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 only guntur. Only guntur. Only guntur. You want the heat? Yeah. Then you are getting. Then it's only one eagle. Uh, then yeah, completely. Hmm. That gives the smell. From the beginning, we oh. put the eagle. Favorite shole kebab. Ah, shole kebab. Fish shole. Fish shole kebab. Bar and a family room. Family, kids, you can enjoy this. This really reminds me of the good old days. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good old days, you would go to restaurants, so there would always be a section cordoned off. So if you had family with you, if you had your the ladies of the house, if you had children, that's where you would sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about 25 years back. 25 years ago. That's right. I mean, you're stepping, you're stepping back in time. <laughs> I think restaurants like these are also time machines of sorts. So if you miss the yesteryear, if you miss the good old days. to step into a restaurant like this it immediately transports you back there yeah not just in terms of the physicality of the place but also the happy memories that you may have definitely of that era after exploring the dishes inside with mr reddy i must say i have worked up an appetite and i can't wait to get my mayuri experience started You know when I told most people that I've never eaten at Mayuri they were rather surprised because after all this is one of the oldest Andhra restaurants in town and I love my Andhra bhojanam I love the pappu I love the annam I love the pappula podi so they were wondering as to how come you've not dined at Mayuri yet but today we're going to correct all wrongs and so we've arrived here to savor some Andhra bhojanam Some pappu, aloo gade palya, some beans palya. So I thought we'll make a beginning with the mini meals. 
so i don't want to do the full meals because the full meals is the same dishes but i think it's more in terms of the quantity it's limitless quantities there is the annam of course and then of course the happala this is the sambar and the rasam what i noticed was that the rasam here was a little thicker and what i also find is there's some horse gram that's ground together with some of the spices that goes in that rasam puri this is the mulangi chutney to add a bit of spice to your meal you have some pickle as well i think let's get the show on the road with some annam the pappula podi and some nei ah that rice is nicely moistened with all that tuppa i think i need a little more pappula podi i think i have been a little greedy with the ghee That spicy heat it's potent in the chili heat that is pricking away at my tongue and also a bit of its saltiness this is a pappula podi that is quite vivacious in its flavors i think i definitely need a little more nahi ah thank you you need some of that ghee to round off the spicy kick of that spice lentil powder mm. and to set the tone for your meal So my chili chicken too is here already. Mm. So you got a bit of that pungency or that mulangi. So the kai gudai there. Mm. That's a chutney that. Packs a spicy punch. So the holy gudai there, darling. Yeah. There's some tamarind too that I can taste in it. When we are shooting, the food comes to the leaf, but then we take our shots, so it tends to cool down a bit. So therefore, it's always nice to introduce some hot pappu to the mix. Mm. I've said this before, and I will repeat it again a million times. I love the manner in which a good Andhra pappu pleases your soul. This is a lentil preparation that's quite thick, as opposed to let's say a typical dal. So it's got a good measure of the protein. but then there's also plenty of acidity that you taste there's plenty of sourness that you taste perhaps in that tamarind that helps balance some of the heaviness of that pappu mm. and as a pappu that is also very spicy i can taste the spice of the green chili at the back of my head mm. i think what may be a good idea is to also have some more nei with that annam sulpa nei se goda so in case of spice of the pappu gets a little too much for you have liberal lashings of the ghee mm. because of fat of that tuppa will do well to cleanse your palate of all that spicy heat that comes from the green chili that goes into that pappu mm. let's taste now some of that potatoes mm. That's a potato that's rather mild, very pleasing in its flavors. There's a bit of coconut that goes into it, some onion, and that onion is moist and crunchy, and also a bit of the jeeri ghee that you taste on your palate. And now some beans. There's plenty of coconut, plenty of onions, and the tempering of the fried urad dal, the curry leaf, etc. That you spot in this beans kura. Mm. I like the fact that the beans still have a bit of crunch there. You know, a good traditional meal is all about balance. So you'll have spice that perhaps comes from the pappu, that comes from the chutney, the mulangi chutney in this case, and then you'll have other dishes on your bade ale, on your banana leaf, that are quite soothing, that are quite calming in nature. So even if you've bitten into a little more spice than you can handle. You've got the company of the other dishes, whether it's a perugu or the very mildly flavored kuras, to help cleanse your palate of some of that chili heat. My chili chicken has been here for a while and waiting for me to taste it. Oh, that chicken is moist and juicy. 
The chili chicken is a rather deceptive dish to the first bite because when you taste it first, what you're tasting mostly is some of that sweetish character that comes from these sauces that go into that dish, mostly from the soy sauce. The soy sauce also has a bit of that caramel tone. But as you then taste more of that sauce, mm, that's where some of that spicing of that green chili takes over. You can see all the chili seeds that are clinging on to the chicken. Quite mimicking that green chili hit too that holds on to your tongue and is also quite assertive as it slithers down your throat to your tummy. Fish Shole Kebab. Of course, the basa is a fish that by itself doesn't really have too much flavor and is also a fish that is very light to the bite. Not one of my favorite fish to savor, but in a coating like this, fortified with all the spices of that shole kebab, a bit of that chili warm, perhaps some of that garam masala that goes into it. It's a sort that makes even a basa tolerable. You know the chili chicken, as a dish can be quite addictive. What I like about this particular preparation here is that there is a green chilli spice but that green chilli spice is quite balanced against that umami savouriness that comes from the soy. You know there's some places where you eat the chilli chicken and the chilli chicken will literally burn a hole in your throat and also in your tummy when it gets in there and will also make its presence felt long after you've tasted the bird. But out here, they've balanced the green chilli heat with some of the other ingredients that have gone into it. And I think that's what a good dish should be all about. You want that heat, but you don't want that heat to be so much that you don't taste anything else in that dish or you don't taste any of the other preparations that follow. And that is something that comes only if you're blessed with a kitchen where chefs have spent innumerable number of years fine-tuning and honing those recipes. And I think that's what makes a meal at age-old establishments so satisfying. I think next we're going to go for that keema ball, that keema unde, which is a rather popular dish here. Even as I hold that keema ball in my hand, I can sense its fragility. The exterior of that keema ball is quite literally collapsing under the gentle weight of my fingers. If you listen carefully, you can probably hear that crisp crackle of that exoskeleton of that keema ball. Oh, it's absolutely soft on the inside. I think its texture mimics that of a galauti kebab. Mm. Beyond the flavors, I love the texture of that keema ball. I love the lacy crunch of that skin and then the pasty softness of the meat within. Mm. I think the meat has also been fortified with some roasted gram and that is something that you definitely taste. I think more than the flavours, I am quite taken in by the texture of that keema unde. Also a fair bit of the chilli heat that I am tasting in that. I can taste the hit of the kasuri methi, the dried fenugreek in this. You have the gentle whisper of its crisp, lacy skin and then the clinging, moist softness of the mash within. Beyond the slight sweetness that comes from the onions and the warmth that perhaps comes from some red chilli powder that goes into that keema dumpling, what is also most apparent to the palate is the flavour of the dried fenugreek, the kasuri methi. And to me, the keema ball would also make for a great accompaniment to that Anna Rasam. Mm, that to me is a match made in heaven. You can sense a bit of the pastiness that comes from the gram flour that goes in as binder. And I think what that Rasam does with its garlicky punch and also the sourness, it helps cut through some of the pastiness of that gram flour. Mm, that is delicious. 
I think before I call for the biryani, I'm going to taste some of that annam with the sambar. This is the South Ekai sambar today. Mm. Just as I was beginning to feel the assault of the chili in that kheema ball, that sambar is doing rather well to placate mm, my taste buds. Chicken shole kebab. Sir, here it is. There's some boneless shole kebab here. Basically, this has come just off the pan. Mm, the kebab is moist and juicy. There's a bit of a cornstarch that you taste in its batter. But on the inside, that chicken is moist. Moist and carries with it plenty of flavor of the curry leaf. Well, time to taste the biryani now. What was very interesting about this biryani is its color. And as I've learned from Redi Garu, is that the color basically comes from braising the ginger, garlic and the onions. The spices that go in are rather limited. So you've got some cinnamon, some cloves and some cardamom. That's all. So the grains of rice are rather disparate. But when you bring it together, it readily forms a clump. What's most interesting is the flavor that wafts through your palate. Mm. You're definitely tasting the sweet astringency of the cloves and of the cinnamon. Mm. Let's taste some of the meat now. This is a biryani that's rather mellow, that's very gentle in a manner that it whispers to your palate. So typically when you think of Andhra biryanis, sometimes you're thinking of a lot of chili heat. But this biryani is anything but that. What it really conveys to your palate is the flavor, the gentle warming flavors of the spices. And that's really what I'm tasting. Mm. The rice too is soft and the salt that readily dissolves when you place it in your mouth. You know, what has been enjoyable about all the dishes that I've tasted is that each one is not only distinct in its preparation style, but also in the heat that it conveys to your palate. So for instance, I found the papu that I tasted right at the outset, I found that quite spicy. And also the radish, the mulangi chutney. What was also spicy was the kheema unde. The chili chicken surprisingly, although had the green chili, the green chili heat was also balanced with the savouriness of the soy and the other ingredients including the pepper etc that went into that preparation. But when it comes to the biryani, mm, that biryani is mellow, is aromatic and almost sings to your palate a lullaby of the three spices that go into it that are so distinct in their flavour. Mutton biryani. Oh, that meat is pink. What's quite distinct about the biryani here and rather interesting here is that every grain of rice is separate. But it is also rather soft and moist in the manner in which it clumps together. You really don't need to make any effort to chew on that rice. That rice has soaked up, absorbed all the juices of the meat. Mm. Mutton biryani, rice do suganda bere. There's a certain aroma that you will taste in that mutton biryani rice. And I think that's a character of the meat, the curry that goes into the making of the biryani. Mm. There's a certain fulsomeness to the flavor of the rice. And I think when it comes to meat, its flavors, its juices, also have a bit of a savory, slightly salty edge to it. And that's what it impregnates every grain of the rice with. The chicken rice. Too is tasty, but sits on your palate rather lightly. When I tasted the chicken rice, I could taste more of the aromas of the spices, whether it was the cinnamon, cardamom and the cloves. But out here, in this mutton biryani, just the rice alone, what you're tasting, is a savoury, slightly salty, juicy flavours of the meat.
and now in this I can also taste the character of the tomato the slight sour edge that it gives to that biryani But once you get past the savouriness of the meaty juices, you can feel the warmth, the residual warmth of the spices on your palate. Such that if I were to sip on some water now, the water would be slightly sweetish. Anyway, let's get to that mutton. A good sign is when you find a bit of fat ribboned through your meat. This is mutton piece thinna ke allu beda. So I think this biryani has about two or three pieces of the mutton. But to me, honestly, the meat, of course, is a lovely bonus. But it's about the rice because you're always eating more of the rice. So you want all the flavors to be carried in that rice. If you taste a biryani and you find yourself looking for the meat because that rice doesn't have enough flavors, then in my opinion, it's a biryani that hasn't done its job. When that rice cooks along with that meat. You want that rice to imbibe all the flavors of the meat, also the spices that go into the making of the biryani. That meat is a lovely bonus. Mm. I think that's what you call a happy meal, a happy Andhra meal. Here at Mayuri, Minerva Circle, Bengaluru. It ends up, sir, on the high level actually. Yeah, the end piece of this money, yeah, we'll taste it, sir. For Mr. Reddy, we will taste this chicken manchurian. Hmm. There is something pleasing about these Sino-Indian preparations. There's a bit of a salty hit that I taste from the soy, and then you got plenty of garlic and the spring onions. Hmm. After all those dishes, I definitely need the calming, redeeming qualities of some good perugu. Well, I certainly took my time getting to Hotel Mayuri, but then I always believe in the timing of things. I think you only meant to experience something when the time is right for you, and I think today the time was certainly right. Certainly right, going by the number of dishes that I've tasted, and most of them. I would strongly recommend. But beyond the food that you've seen plenty of, what I really enjoyed most was my interaction with the founder of Mayuri, Mr. Chenna Reddy. I loved the unbridled passion and enthusiasm with which he spoke for the dishes. Typically, I get into the kitchen, I spend 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, but out here, I spent an entire hour fascinated by the detailing that he gave me of each one of his dishes. Mr. Reddy is certainly someone who believes in the adage that less is more. He doesn't want to clutter the flavors of his biryani with 12 or 15 spices that go in. He says all that I need is three spices to create that magic for me. What's important is the technique with which my boys cook the biryani based on the training that I've given them. And I think that's what makes Hotel Mayuri here in Minerva Circle, JC Road, the kind of popular andhra destination that it is so if you want to savor some great andhra fare but in an environment that harks back to the good old days of yesteryear definitely find your way to this place i hope you've enjoyed this slightly extended slightly long episode until the next time take care stay safe stay strong stay happy and of course happy eating Reddy Garu he asked me he said what did you think of the food now that we are off camera I said sir whether I'm tasting on camera or behind camera it's the same and I said this keema unde that I've tasted has the ability to elevate other dishes too and very few dishes can do that it's very punchy andre solpa flavor solpa jasti ide so then agutte you need something else to take some of that If you have so much flavor, if you have so much happiness, you have to share it, no? Yes, yeah, with somebody. That's what this Kima Unde does. Happy eating. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind-the-scenes footage. 
shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!